So, look at me. I'm being so nice. Aren't I great? Aren't I wonderful? Let's check in with Dave and see what he's got since the last time we did this. Ooh. Curry cheese ball. The Good Springs Burger. The Feminist Poetry. What? What? We got the Sweet Sausage Baked Ziti. We got Egg Muffins. We get the par Parsley Pesto Linguini. Cranberry Apple Chicken Salad. The 4th of July Special. Oh! Oh! <gasps> It's on the grill! Fourth of July special! Fourth of July special! Fourth of July special! Let's do this! We get to see the grill! We get to do a grill check! Wait, real quick, let's see what the let's see what the view counts on this are. Ooh, above average, 263 views over the course of two weeks and 11 likes. Look at that. I'm going to give him one extra like. Look at that. Look at how nice I am. I just, I just it contributed a, a 12th of his, of his overall viewership. Let's do this. Welcome to Dave's Cooking Show. And for you today, um, we have my 4th of July spectacular. So happy 4th to everyone. And we got a lot of stuff to cook today. So. Ooh, we've never seen him wearing the green bag before. It looks like he's upgraded. <laughs> Has he upgraded completely to, oh, I can turn off the, hold on. I should hide the, I should get rid of the, uh, we don't need the live leak for this anymore. No, I don't want to keep live leak up. We don't want to. Has he, uh, he, I think he's finally upgraded to just like wearing a single, like extra, extra large shirt as his life. I want to see, can we get a pants check? Is he wearing pants? Uh, first thing we're going to do is start off with a barbecue sauce. This is going to be the sauce for my smoked brats. Yeah. Rick normally he wears this, like, uh, normally he wears this like grease stained Pac-Man shirt. Ribs and the burgers we're going to be making. I'm making a double version of this recipe. I'll give you the single version because it should be more than enough. What you want to do is start off with a cup of brown sugar okay. and then a cup and a half of ketchup. Hmm. And then you want to add a half a cup of water followed by a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. Okay, all right, all right. Followed by a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, Worcester sauce, however the fuck you pronounce that stupid shit. Does he live in Connecticut or Massachusetts? Cause the Worcester is that's a that's a Massachusetts thing. Saying that saying that like Worcester is a is a uh, is a ma is a mass thing. And then you want to add about a tablespoon of molasses. Like I said, I'm doubling this recipe, so that was a little bit more than a tablespoon. And then you want to add about a teaspoon of salt, freshly ground black pepper, and then you want to add a half a teaspoon of onion powder, mm. a quarter teaspoon of mustard powder, mm. and okay. a quarter teaspoon of paprika. Huh. And that's pretty much it. Now, this next step right. is optional if you're- All right, this is not offensive so far. This is totally fine. First alcohol or you're under 21. Uh, but I like to add a shot of bourbon to the sauce. Like I said, it's completely optional. You can leave it out if you don't want to do it for whatever reason. Then you just want to grab a whisk and stir this around till everything is mixed together and incorporated. And then you want to put it over a low heat and simmer this for 45 minutes. Hmm. Of course, like with all sauces, taste throughout the cooking process to adjust seasonings if you need to. This was turned. Hey, he got a new. Wait a minute. He got a new pot. Look at this. 
This is not his. This is not his old dirty pot. This is his. This is a new one. He got a new pot. Dave, I'm impressed. I mean, out of touch, too sweet for my liking. So I ended up adding about a teaspoon, two teaspoons of hot sauce, and um, another round of uh, black pepper, and that evened it out. All right, let's get on to cooking. All right, let's start on- A new mixing bowl? Okay, his, his counter's still dirty. There's still stuff on his counter, but it's not as bad as usual. On the coleslaw. First, we gotta make the- <laughs> A clean new bowl. Pressing. So, first thing you wanna do is add about a half a cup of mayonnaise. Oh my god! That's a new measuring cup too, right? We've not seen him use these measuring cups before. <gasps> Followed by a tablespoon of lemon juice. Followed by a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. And finally, a tablespoon of, uh, maybe a little bit more, of a nice spicy mustard. Then you want to add two teaspoons of sugar for a little bit of sweetness. A teaspoon of onion powder. And then about a half a teaspoon of celery seed. And then, of course, the last thing we add is salt and pepper to taste. Then just want to grab a little spoon and mix this up until everything is well incorporated. And got our uh, coleslaw mix there, just some cabbage and carrots. Pre-made coleslaw mix. Mm, judging just a little bit. Judging just a little bit. Come on, chop up your own. This is clearly like a, you can even tell by how dried out the carrots are. This is one of those pre-made bags that you get at Walmart. Eh, all right. And you I can't expect try your best to get every single drop of this dressing out. There isn't a lot, but it does go a long way. Then you just want to grab a spoon and work this coleslaw around till all the cabbage and carrots are coated in the dressing. Pop the top on our little Tupperware thing here. Of course, do a taste test and put it in the fridge until you're ready to use it. I'm not gonna. Be, I'm not gonna lie. This is not an offensive slaw. So far, so good. But we haven't seen the grill yet. We haven't seen the grill yet. This can be done the night before, by the way. Okay, let's get our ribs prepared. The first thing, and I know this is controversial. Some people don't do this. Some people swear by this. I like doing it. We got to remove the silver skin from the ribs. So just grab a paper towel, make a little cut, and it should come off easy like that. I thought most people remove the silver skin. Don't they? Isn't, don't most people, isn't removing the silver skin what you're supposed to do? Yeah, I was pretty sure that that's like what you're like. I was pretty sure that was like uncontroversially what you're supposed to do. The second rack, I don't know if the silver skin got removed or what, but it did not have any silver skin on it. So I just left it as is. By the way, both racks ended up tasting damn near identical. And now we start the uh, process of getting... It's not an edible, but it tastes like shit. Yeah, that's what I was always under the I was always under the impression that you're supposed to take it off, like like unequivocally. Um, now, obviously, you can make your own spice blend, rub blend, but my local grocery store, I've said this many times, has several in-house spice blends they do themselves, and I think they work out pretty good. So totally reasonable. If you got a local grocery chain that does their own in-house spice blends, no judgment. That's reasonable. That's appreciating local artisanship is what that is.
<coughs> Excuse me. I just went with one of them. So I just heavily seasoned the, the hell out of these ribs. And, you know, pound the spice mix in, pack it in there. And then let's we're going to put these on it's the smoker uh, at about 225, 250. Took me, I think, five hours to cook these, if I remember correctly. Use a meat thermometer. Um, again, you can pick up a meat thermometer at any Target, Walmart, grocery store. Really important tool to have in the kitchen. All right, let's go out to the smoker. All right, got our ribs. Oh, no. Oh, no, Dave. Oh, Dave, that smoker's dirty as shit. That smoker is dirty as fuck, man. C clean it off, bro. That is filthy. Oh, man, it's even on the handles. Oh, look at down there. Look at that. Oh, we got the sewer shot down here. Ooh, man. No, don't use a metal brush, little morphine nanny. Here's, here's an educational moment. The more you know, don't use a metal brush. Reason being that those metal brushes sometimes shed the metal. And when you put food on there, the little pieces of metal can get jammed in the food and they can poke your mouth. Just scrape them. Scrape them. Use a scraper. You can just scrape it right off. And if you really need to get into the middle, uh, wash it. Take it away. Use some some scrubbing, some salt on there. Scrub the shit out of it. Be careful with those metal brushes. They are they are convenient, but if you get a metal a piece of metal brush in your food, you're gonna regret it. You're gonna regret it. Or yeah, uh, yeah, you can of course you can of course regularly burn off the excess stuff, but sometimes you're gonna have to sc scrape it. They make brushes with looped bristles that won't fall off now. That's that's definitely a better option, but still. Still, be careful. On and got our brats on, and if you've never had a smoked brat, you are really missing something out of your life. Man. If you have Yeah, ooh, yikes. I got I got to be honest. This is a this is a pretty dirty grill condition, Dave. A smoker smoke your brats. Uh, all right, and uh, if you're wondering, I used apple wood for this. Oh, I put the brats on about 40 minutes after I put the ribs on, but they got done at about the same time. Okay, now it's time for our barbecue pasta salad. Mm. Um, mm. Already in the bowl, I have a pound of medium shells. And with pasta salad, it's the one time you want to break the rule of not rinsing your pasta pasta salad you have to you have to blast it with cold water to stop the cooking process and pasta salads are cold salads so it's the one time where i break that rule but in the bowl already uh we have uh, i really don't i really don't like the idea of a barbecue pasta salad i'm just going to be completely honest and uh i don't know I guess it's not intrinsically bad. I can't really ding him for it, but that's definitely not the that's that is not the flavor profile I like. Uh, um, barbecue pasta, mm, nope, not for a me. A cup and a third of nope, not for me. mayonnaise, a half a cup of that barbecue sauce that we made, um, about two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, about a teaspoon of hot sauce. Actually, it's probably closer to two teaspoons on the of the hot sauce. I got kind of uh, hot sauce liberal yeah. with it. I liked it. I wanted it a little spicy. A little bit of cayenne pepper. Whoa! Uh, fresh red. Wait, fresh red peppers. Fresh celery. Fresh green onions. Oh! A little bit of about a He's teaspoon trying. of chili powder and about a quarter teaspoon garlic powder i previously already um chopped up the veggies i'll get to them in a minute right now we're just salt and peppering to taste but you'll want to chop up one red bell pepper one celery rib and about four green onions just slice them thin and i think that's pretty much everything that goes into this uh wonderful dish oh one uh 
One other ingredient, we'll get to it in a second. Uh, it, it is optional, but I chopped up about a half a cup of Monterey Jack cheese. But mm. I figured we'll give this a little bit of a stir. I don't know about that. And this. Um, I don't know about this flavor profile, but the fresh vegetables, thinly cut, those those thinly diced, uh, uh, fresh vegetables. My God. My God. Basically, you just want I'm to stir actually, this. Actually, I'm unironically impressed. All the noodles are evenly coated, and then I'll pop it into that, uh, into one of those bowls that I put the coleslaw in and put it down in the fridge. Again, this can be done the night before uh, if you want to get a little, a little ahead. All right, let's move on. Let's move on right into a booze break. I think we need a cocktail for this. Come on, it's the 4th of July. We all need uh -oh. a cocktail. Uh-oh. Uh, is it gonna is it gonna go downhill? Oh no. Anyway, there's the cheese. Alright, we're gonna make a Kentucky mule. First thing you wanna do to a cocktail Ooh. glass oh. is add eh, about oh. two, two and a half ounces of We're bourbon. hitting it hard! We're hitting it hard right off the gate! And then you wanna add two very tall shot glasses right off the gate. Oh add the juice of a freshly squeezed lime. If you're worried about the seeds, just you know, cup your hand. This lime didn't really have much uh, for seeds, so just did it like that. Add some ice to our whiskey lime mix. And then top off with some ginger beer. Oh, an actual ginger beer. That looks like an actual ginger beer. That doesn't look like a, like a, uh, uh, you know, that's not some ginger ale crap. Huh. And that's it. That's the Kentucky Mule. And that's the cocktail for the 4th of July Spectacular. All right, booze break is over. Back to cooking. Okay, the glorious meat is done on the smoke. I'm not gonna lie. Those ribs look pretty decent. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, a couple of these brats look a little dried out. But those ribs look decent. We got a few la uh, quick things to it do. It looks like there's a little bit much of the leftover crusted seasoning. Like, I feel like biting in right here might get you, like, a, a sandy mouth because of how much seasoning is there. But let's see. So what I'm going to do is put this in the oven at about 150 just to keep it warm. And we're going to grill up some corn. Oh, uh there's the grill. Oh man, the grill is in grim condition. Oh man, it's bad. It's only gotten worse. Look at this over here. Look at just how much crust, look at it, it's like like dripping off. Look at it there, there's a whole, there's like a stalactite dropping down. Man, that's bad. Uh, this corn has been soaking in cold water for about four hours, I think is when I put it in. And we're just going to grill it on the grill. Um, again, I don't chuck my... Oh, God, look at that. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Dave. You got to clean that grill, man. Oh, what the fuck is this? What even is that? Is that like a dead slug? What the fuck is that? My corn, one of the biggest mistakes people make and why their corn turns out like shit is they shuck their corn at the store. I never shuck my corn at the store. You just go by feel. It'll be fine. All right, we'll give this about 20 minutes on the grill and we should be good to go. Okay, now. Trans girl Lily says maybe him leaving the corn unshucked improves the food safety of this recipe. Yeah, well, burgers though answered that question real quick, didn't it? <laughs> Time to make the burgers. These are pretty much just simple quarter patties. Ooh, ooh, god, this grill is in grim Pound condition. Patties. 
that I'm going to season up with a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Um, and then Zach Miller says, this is a gas grill. Why does it have so much soot on it? Like you dropped old charcoal on it. Um, that's because he's never cleaned this grill. We've been watching Dave for like two years on my show. And I know he's been doing this show for a lot longer than that. And we've never seen this grill get cleaned. There was a time where we were able to track a single piece of, of putrefacted fat between episodes. That's how bad it is. There was like a glob of, of, of charcoal brick, uh, a tie, like, like, like rock. What what's the right? Petrified. That's the word I'm looking for. Petrified fat. That was just there between episodes. Just grill them up. Uh, quarter pound patties, you know, three, maybe four minutes aside. And, uh, obviously when you get done laying them all down, season the other side. All right. See you back when they're done. All righty. Thanks to the magic of cooking show editing. These burgers are done. And this one looks real dried out. The other ones look okay, except for the fact that they're sitting on this disgusting grill. These that, that is, is unironically makes these totally unappetizing. They look like they're cooked just fine. They look like this besides this one, this one's way overdone, but you know, sometimes you fuck up one of your burgers the grill though makes these a no-go the burgers are a no-go and uh yeah just uh put the only cheese appropriate for a cheeseburger on our nation's birthday american all right we'll give this a minute to melt up and bring them on in the house okay let's start cutting right, these let's see ribs it. up let's they're still the ribs. fairly hot and you just want to try to get in between the bone okay. and boom Good smoke ring okay. on these things, and they're falling apart like butter. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He did it. He did the. He did the ribs. He did the ribs. Yeah. He did it. Got our smoked sausage. We're gonna start uh, chopping them in. Got a good bit of smoke. I know the meat looks pink, but that's from the smoking process. It's unavoidable. Again, it can't be done on the outside or done in the middle and raw on the outside. That's impossible. So I know they look pink. Trust me. I checked them. They hit 165. But you can kind of see all that. I mean... Wait, he's he's correct about that. That the smoking process tends to leave the meat more more pink in appearance. But I don't know what he was saying. What what was he trying to say with the? It can't be done on the inside and raw on the outside. But they're not raw on the outside. They're like really cooked on the outside. What is he? What was he trying to say? Whatever. That juice that was still in those brats. All right, let's plate it up. Okay, let's plate this. Now, I'm quite sure those bratwursts are safe. Up. First thing we want to do. Take some of our smoked sausage and put that right there. Then we got a nice toasted bun. Bun looks good. Little burnt here, but overall bun looks good. Add some iceberg lettuce to the bottom bun. And then because we made quarter pound patties, let's do a double cheeseburger here. We got to give him a no-go on of that Of course, one. we need bacon. Fresh bacon. He actually made bacon. He didn't use bacon bits this time. Because I'm not making a burger without bacon. Fuck that. Then we want to take some of that barbecue sauce we made, slather it on both the burger all right, and the all brats. Right. Top bun. I'm not going to lie. The brats look good. The brats just look good with the homemade barbecue sauce I'm, i i don't know i think dave might have finally barring the grill you know the grill was fucked but i think dave might have actually made something edible all right burger done then you take some of that corn that's been mm. steamed in its own Corn's looking a little underdone, not gonna lie. That's looking that's looking a little underdone. I don't know, I don't know. That corn's looking mighty underdone. Mmm. Own cob. Again, this is why I never shuck my corn. Add some of those ribs. 
slather that shit in sauce. Want to add some of our barbecue macaroni salad. Okay. And then, of course, we cannot forget about the coleslaw. So add some coleslaw. And that's okay. pretty much it. That okay. is a perfect 4th of July cookout plate. With all the fixins and all the trimmings. So, from everyone at Dave's Cooking Show to everyone watching this, happy 4th of July, everybody. All right. Okay. Dave. Dave. Oh, Dave. All right. You know, a round of applause. This is improvement. This is improvement. The grill condition is, of course, terrible, but that's been a problem forever. Dave, if you see this segment, please, for the love of God, take some time and clean your grill. You will thank yourself. Your food will taste better and you will live just a little bit longer. Otherwise, though, besides the filthy grill, the smoked meats looked just fine. The pasta salad had fresh cut vegetables in it. He made his own sauces at home. He didn't buy pre-made stuff. This was a cooking video. Dave made a cooking video. I, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm actually impressed. Dave, improvement. Improvement. <laughs>